Well, that was an eye-catching introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Starman, and welcome to the first chapter of Let's Play Discworld 2 Mortality Bites, or as it was known in England, uh, Discworld 2 Missing Presumed. Now, uh, this is, of course, the sequel to the very first Discworld adventure game, which was the very first Let's Play I ever did. And I've been meaning to get to this one for a while, but... Uh, Oddly enough, the original Discworld game isn't nearly as hard to get to run on a modern computer as this one. Uh, thankfully, Scum MV turns out to be perfectly suited toward running this one. I'll include a link to that program in the description of this video. So you may uh, check that one out for yourself if you're a classic gamer with a whole bunch of old software you can't get to run. Anyway, uh, this game is a little bit different from the first Discworld game. Uh, as you can see, the art style is different. It is uh, using more traditional animation rather than the pixel sprite method. Uh, I personally didn't like the animation for this that much, because even though it is higher quality, a lot of the character designs just seem off to me compared to the first game. Uh, Death looks too cute for one thing, and I've got the big blue eyes when it's supposed to be, you know, sparkly blue points of light, so it seems like the designers, uh, the art designers for this, just barely looked at the descriptions and just went here and there, but I'll be pointing out some things here and there that are different from uh, how they are in the books. And the basic plot of this game, uh, much as the first Discworld game borrowed a lot from the book Moving Pictures and uh, Guards Guards, this one borrows uh, primarily from a book called Reaper Man which was a story about the Grim Reaper, Death, who is a main character in the Discworld series, uh, being forced to retire and trying to live an ordinary life before being replaced by a personification of, you know, the end of life that is not quite so personable and caring as he is. And I've had to uh, adjust the sound on this a little bit because the music and sound effects on this can drown out the dialogue, which we don't want that. So I played with the, I think I found a good balance. Uh, we'll see how this works. I might adjust it later, or if it's really bad, uh, when I listen to it after recording this, I will change it and you'll never know that I did. So, haha. -ha. But uh, yeah, the primary plot of this, without giving away too much spoilers, uh, the title kind of gives it away, but basically this story focuses upon death, and we bring back Rincewind as the hero who has to put things right when circumstances cause death to go wrong. And I think that's all I need to say for the moment, so let us go ahead and go into the opening scene and the opening song, because uh, one of the changes that they did for this that is an improvement is that Eric Idle of Monty Python is back as Rincewind, and this time he uh, not only sings, he wrote an original song for the game, which he performs here uh, in the opening credits, and the middle part of the game, and the closing credits, and uh, they sure got their money's worth on the fact that Eric Idle, who is a rather talented singer and songwriter, uh, wrote a song for the game. Uh, the rest of the voice cast from the original Discworld game also returned, uh, with two exceptions. Unfortunately, John Pertwee, the third Doctor, who was the voice of the Fool, and many other parts in the first Discworld game, uh, he passed on before they finished the programming and the recording on this one, so obviously he did not return. And uh, Tony Robinson, who, uh, the voice of Baldrick, well, he played Baldrick on Blackadder, and uh, you know, he's been in many other great British comedies as well. He played Nobby in the game and a lot of other uh, incident roles here and there. He was the thief who stole the dragon book from Unseen University. Uh, he did not return for this one either. They're both replaced by a very talented actor, Nigel Planner, who he's also a very talented uh, British comedic actor, one of the foremost uh, actors of his generation. I think he's still primarily best known in America for being the, uh, <clears throat> being Neil the Hippie on The Young Ones, and he'll actually be doing this Neil voice for a character later on in the game, it'll be pretty obvious if you're a Young Ones fan, 
but, uh, you know, this game isn't bad, but I still like the first one a little bit better because the plotting is a little bit tighter, and the humor feels a little bit closer to what a Terry Pratchett story is like. This one is a lot more dependent on Monty Python-esque humor, which there's a subtle difference between a Pratchett humor and Monty Python humor, and there's a lot of in-jokes uh, to Monty Python on the grounds that, hey, Eric Idle is here, we can get away with it. It's kind of funny, given that Eric Idle got a reputation later on for, you know, exploiting his Monty Python connections to make a fast book to the point where he actually did a stage show called Eric Idle Exploits Monty Python and then the Greedy Bastard Tour. But uh, enough of that trivia for now. Let us go on to the opening movie and then the opening song. Quick little note, uh, this opening scene here is a parody of Lethal Weapon 3, of all things. Oh, I, I knew a farmer, and I knew him well. And he had There's the death of rats. Some kind of animal. And I'm leaving the subtitles on for this part, because it's a little hard to understand I Eric Idle playing loved drunk loved singer. With the uh, subtitles a off. Nipple or a cucumber. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't remember the words. They were really, really. Now I can't remember that either. What's that word for something that's clever and short? Damn! It's 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 like what you make helmets out of. Mm -hmm. ah. oh. I can't say that a phrase of mine was tinny. Ironic, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pithy. That's the word. The thong was really pithy. <laughs> I don't know which thong. What are you going on about songs for? Hey, okay. what was that? <laughs> Over there, in the donkey cart park. <laughs> No, it was something. Let's go and see. No, it's not dangerous. It's the start of the game. That can't kill us off yet. Come on, trust me. All I'm going to do is look. Well, this is a pretty poor job. I think I can dismantle it. Uh. Nearly a... <laughs> I think that was Thanks, Nanny Ogg's right. cat you've got Grebo. Nine minutes and seven seconds left. You know what we could do? We could drive this thing out of here. <laughs> oh, damn. No donkey. Oh, you could pull it. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. Looks like we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> That uh, couldn't be simpler. Oh, I'm thinking we should turn the green flask. What do you think? Maybe the red? Let's turn the green flask then. Uh, it's just a hunch. Remember the time in the high energy facility when I turned the yellow flask and blew everything up? Right, so I'm turning the red flask then. What? Did I say green? Well, I meant red. Look, we can do it your way if you... Look, I'm sure, okay? You ready? Aren't you going to miss all this stuff when they stop making these games? Aren't you just going to miss it all? I'm turning the flask. There, you see? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Grab the cat, gangway! Take cover! The animation budget's increased at least. Well, of course that's a good thing. It means they haven't spent as much on plot, doesn't it? 
They probably halved the number of insane object puzzles for a start. <clears throat> Sorry, I mean clever natural thinking exercises, of course. <laughs> Trust me, I've been through this sort of thing before. There's a place you're always welcome That's as nice as it can be Everyone can get in Cause it's absolutely free That's death No need to take a breath Just lie around all day With not a single bill to pay Hooray that's death No more sicknesses or flu If you've lived beyond your means You can die beyond them too Boo hoo Well the greatest and the finest mm, Have already died Why not simply join them On the other side That's Say farewell to all your bills Rip up all your wills And pop your final pills Amen, that's death It's a tater tate with haze If you're not feeling great Then it's the best way to lose weight Mate Nothing here to hurt you No one's here to nag Come die with me If your life's a drag That's death For wealthy and well-bred All of them are here Gentlemen and fellow wizards. Here's looking at your bottom. Well, up to your eye. Ha! Huh. Pull the other one. It's got strange knobbly bits on. Happy Hogs Watch Day. Thank you. Uh, uh, colleagues, we are gathered here today for the final departure party of our dear soon to be departed comrade, the wizard Windle Poons. Hooray! Good old Windle, don't forget to ghost right. Three, two, one, zero! What? Nothing. That's it, I hope. Right, everybody, our funeral at 2.30, then drinks and ham rolls in the main hall at 3. Hey, uh, well, what's happening? Call this service, do you? I'm dead, I am. I demand to be taken away to a better life, as per contract. Oi, things were different in my day. 
You died properly, not like the deaths you get nowadays. Uh, he, 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 he says he's not dead. I am dead, but I'm still bloody ambulatory. No, you're not. You're fooling no one but yourself, you know. Hmm, well, he, he looks dead. <laughs> Smells dead, of course. He always did, though. And I suppose my word doesn't count for anything around here. I can't be dead if I'm still talking, now can I? Look, old chap, it's our considered professional view that you are an extinct wizard. Your opinion doesn't count because you're dead. Oh, yeah, good point. Well, I suppose I'll just sit here then, shall I? I suppose it takes a while. So, um, how is death, um, actually? See any, um, white lights, you know, tunnels, girls with harps? Oh, yes, please. I'll take two. No? Uh, if this is heaven, I wish I'd done wicked things when I was alive. What's happening to me? Uh, well, it, it seems that your body's dead, but your soul's still in... Well, in residence. Well, I'm not hanging about here for the rest of my afterlife. I've had a hard life, Arts Chancellor. I'm entitled to a bit of paradise. I've read about it. Young women and wine and whatnot. Look, your life's over. You're not supposed to moan about it. And definitely not supposed to contemplate any... any... Uh, whatnot. Uh, who's responsible for this? Where's death, then? This is outrageous. You, you, you can't have a soul hanging about a deceased body like that. Why not? It's unhygienic. Yeah, there's, there's food laid out. We can't have him near the nibbles. The health inspectors will be on to us. Yes, yes, good point. Now compose yourself, Windrow. You can't decompose here. I shall have to ask you to move along. Oh, comes to something when a man can't even drop stone dead in peace. Eternal rest, eternal rest, is it? Well, I'd like to take this lying down. I'm off to find myself a nice shallow grave. There's been too much of this sort of thing lately. Rincewind? Rincewind! <sighs> ah, Rincewind. There you are. Now, as you're aware, there have been some very odd goings on in this city of late. I am referring, of course, to the sudden disappearance of death. Oh, they're dying, but their souls aren't being taken away. They're dead and alive at the same time, and now it's happened to poor Windrow. Death's gone, and we need to summon him back. So, uh, here you go. We need to perform the rites of Ashkent. I suppose you have a list of mysterious ingredients that I now have to run off and collect. What? How did you know that? I just had a dreadful suspicion. All right, so what have we got to find? Well, it, it's a rush job, so just the bare minimums will do. We need three equal-sized sticks of wood and four cc's of mouse's blood. It shouldn't take you more than a few minutes. Bets, anyone? Um... What is it now? Let's just say that uh, we needed more than the bare minimums. Not to say that I'm questioning your judgment. I'm just, uh, planning for the future is all. Well, the rest is all just flash and style. This is a death rite after all. You know the routines. A bit of sparkle and glitter in the air, vile Charles stench erupting from the tomb, and lovely dribbly candles. That sort of thing. 
None of which we'll need at all. That's right. Just the wood and the mouse's blood. There never seems to be any way of getting a decent moment's rest around this place. I do like Rincewind's walking animation in this game, though. Act one. The right stuff. All right, well, here we are at the start of Act 1, but first things first, I'm going to uh, turn off the subtitles, and we turn the music down just a scooch. <clears throat> so, here we are at Unseen University. That leads to the High Energy Facility. I don't think we get any sarcastic comments on the locations this time. That leads to the University Gardens. That leads to the Dining Room. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, already you can see one of the uh, main problems I have with this game is that, like I said, there's a lot more random Monty Pythonish humor, but there's also a lot of digs at adventure games in general, and a lot of rinse when breaking the fourth wall and complaining about how utterly tedious all the fetch quests are. Which, you know, the occasional joke about that is fine, but it just makes it so much more annoying when you're stuck on a puzzle and you're frustrated and the character himself is saying yeah this is pointless busy work why are you wasting your time playing this game but uh, first things first I think we'll head back to the dining hall I think we do need to talk to the Arch Chancellor and run through a few things. This is another little thing about the game that's odd, which is that in order to prevent you from speedrunning through the whole thing, there are certain points where unless you've talked to a character and know logically what you're supposed to be doing, uh, you won't be able to do it. Even if you have the right items to accomplish the test, you still won't be able to do it. Or Renswin will say something like, well, good idea, but not just yet. So you have to walk around and sit through all these conversations, which pad out the game. And you never really know, at least the first time you play through it, which ones are helpful and which ones aren't. And unfortunately for my money, this uh, not all the conversations here are funny enough to make up for it. But uh, let's go ahead and talk to the Arch-Chancellor. The Arch-Chancellor, my imperious leader, who thinks shouting is the same as intelligence. Before they made him, they broke the mold. What a sight to stir confidence. Well, possibly not confidence, but it certainly stirs something. And there's nothing here we can pick up at the moment. And, uh, can't get the whipped cream and sausage platter there. The coffin is there, but we I can't I wonder do why it. they always make coffins so sturdy. I mean, who do they think is going to break out? Yeah, sure. So they'd let me spend the game holed up in a coffin. <clears throat> we do have this food here, but we, uh... Can't do anything with that just yet, not even grab a nibble. I would try and scoop it up, but without something to put it in, I would just make a mess. A hint as to what we're going to need to look for later. Food. Well, I say food. It is vaguely organic and probably could be placed inside the mouth in times of emergency. <clears throat> so you see we've got icons here, as in the first... A Discworld game talking about all the various items, but we also have <clears throat> the thought balloon so that we can get a sarcastic aside from Rincewind. Uh, the smile is for greetings. The jester's uh, staff is for joking, sarcastic remarks. And here you see we also got the for asking about sticks. Yeah, we can right click to find which one, uh, what each one is. For when everything else fails. Why not try a little sarcasm? For asking about mouse blood. Yeah, nice uh, illustration there. For asking about glitter dust. For asking about dribbly candles. For asking about a vile stench. For a good conversation starter. <clears throat> okay, we'll start the conversation off. Um, you're sure you really want me to do this job, then? I mean, there's, uh... No one you'd rather... Rather what? Lumber with all these hours and hours of pointless activity. Hmm, well, now, let, let me just consider the alternatives. Um... No. No, you're the bunny, I'm afraid. 
You know, when I get older, I want a job where I just sit drinking milky tea all day too. If you don't get me those three wooden sticks and that mouse's blood, I'll... Understand? Ooh, nasty. Uh, right you are then. And sarcasm. Are you sure there's no one else's life you'd like to ruin? At the moment, I'm content to merely ruin the life of Assistant Wizard Rincewind. I suppose if pushed, I could try ruining the life of Gardener's Assistant Rincewind. Assistant Street Sweeper Rincewind. Actually, I feel a certain yearning to really come down like a ton of rectangular building things upon a sewerage systems blockage removal technician, Rincewind. Mm. So, uh, that was three sticks, a uh, mouse's blood, glitter, stench and candles. Right, back in a tick. Or maybe a jiffy. Right, so, now it begins. The Great Quest. Ah, I can see it all now. Wandering locations, searching for obscure items, staring at objects, wondering what horrible manipulations I have to go through just to secure the most mundane pieces of junk. Can't even go to the lavatory without negotiation with three dwarves and a manically depressed troll for the toilet paper. It's not even as if life has a high score table at the end. <sighs> Still, could be worse, I suppose. I might have paid for the privilege. See what I mean about how there's a lot more fourth wall breaking and mocking the genre? What was it I needed again? Hmm. Three wooden sticks, being of wood, long and thin, and stick shaped, equal lengths preferred. But what are they for? They're for you to find, not stand around asking questions about. And, uh, yes, you Discworld aficionados probably know that this is a legitimate magic ritual taken directly from the books. Uh, the Rite of Ash Kent is the ritual used to summon death if wizards need to talk to him for some reason. And in case you're wondering why they were throwing this party for a wizard who was about to die, uh, it's part of the lore of the Discworld that wizards uh, get a premonition right before they're about to die, and death himself has to come up to pick up their soul personally, rather than passing it off to a minion or an underling. So it's a big deal when a wizard finds out that their death day is approaching and they throw a big party, because, you know, wizards always like to have a good idea, you know, a good excuse for a party. Not that they need the excuse, but, you know, anything that lets them have one and not feel too guilty about it and running up a huge drink spill. <clears throat> But uh, pretty much most of this opening scene, except for the presence of Rincewind, was taken directly from Reaper Man, where one of the subplots does involve Wendell Poons, a elderly wizard, who dies and, well, becomes a zombie. And we'll be seeing Wendell throughout the game, even though he really won't be interacting with Rincewind that much and won't have nearly as much to do with us as he did in the first game, where he was rumbling about uh, wine, women, and pickles. Four cubic centimeters of mouse blood. Should I collect it myself, or should I consult with a very small vampire? Suit yourself. Actually, it's funny, uh, that's a bit of a blatant hint. Look, about this glitter then, where should I try looking for it? When you have a hat as pointy as mine, my boy, now these sort of questions are far, far beneath you. That's what bumbling lackeys are for. And you, I may say, look pretty bumbly. It's obvious. To find glitter, go where glitter can be found. Seek the source, my boy. Pure glitter. That's what we want. Glitter with a capital glur. Go to the main source. Right. Any other suggestions? Well... You could mug a passing pixie, but those little devils can give you a nasty bite. Fair enough. Yeah, for a pointy hat, it sure is bent and going to one side. Or am I talking about his hat? These dribbly candles, then? Yes. Got any ideas, then? Well, my boy, the best dribbly candles come with age. 
a careful process of mellowing, of oozing the wax into careful runnels over hours of devoted time, but a highly skilled job, candle dribbling. Careful aging, just the way we make the perfect Arch-Chancellor. Ah, and careful dribbling too. Now, you're sure about me needing a stench thing? Hmm? Well, only if we want the spell done in the traditional style. So where do I find a stench? Follow your nose. <laughs> oh, that was rather good, though I say it myself. <laughs> All right. Cool, that's enough of this conversation for me. And I think that's enough conversation for this first video. So uh, thank you for tuning in, and next time we will go out and start exploring Unseen University and Ankh-Morpork proper and seeing the people in our neighborhood who we will be exploiting and generally messing about with in order to accomplish the silly task. Until then, take care. <laughs>